Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lena, this is Lena's Bookshelf, and this is the start of another reading vlog. So I am going to be reading The Hunting Wives by May Cobb, and I'm gonna be buddy reading this with Elizabeth, her channel, Elizabeth Gordon, I'll link down below. Uh, she's super fun, she's very chill personality. I love watching her YouTube videos because she's just so chill and calm and every time I watch her videos it makes me feel very zen and calm. It has some really good insight on some really great thrillers and horror books um, and horror is a newer genre for me that I'm kind of getting into so it's been really interesting to hear some of her thoughts. So like I said we will be reading this together and I did get the audio version checked out from my library on the Libby app so I think I'm gonna start this. I have to clean my floors. I just got back from vacation and my floors are a little dirty so I think I'm going to put in my AirPods and start re listening to this, not reading, start listening to this while I sweep and mop my floors. I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on The Hunting Wives. So I am about 70 pages in. And so far all that's happened is this woman, Sophie, uh, lives in this sleepy little town in Texas. And it seems to be very old money. So she kind of strikes up a friendship with Margot, who's kind of like the queen bee of uh, this little group of moms. They invite Sophie to come to... Margot's lake house and shoot with them. They shoot skeet on the weekends. And so that's basically all that's happened so far. I don't know, I'm not loving it yet. It very much feels like a like a mean girls club. Um, it almost feels like Big Little Lies, um, Texas version. <laughs> Just, you know, with the Southern hospitality and the old money and things like that. It already, I can already tell that Sophie is doing things that she typically wouldn't in order to be like Margot or get Margot to like her. Like she talks about how she um, doesn't post, you know, the typical pictures of her kids. Oh, it's the hundredth day of school. Time flies. You know, like she doesn't post the typical social media stuff that the other moms do. And then she, as she starts hanging out with Margot, she starts posting things like that. And I don't know, it just seems like she's changing herself for this mom this friend um and i haven't really quite figured out why yet i haven't really figured out what the draw is of this Margot person yet i'm going to hop on some reading sprints at eight o'clock um with some other people from the facebook book club that i'm in and i'll probably clean up my room a little bit get ready for work tomorrow and everything uh while i listen so i will be back when i have more to report <music> I just finished filming a video for my channel that will probably already be up by the time you see this, but I wanted to update this vlog as well for The Hunting Wives. So I am on page 252 and I have about maybe a third left. Holy crap. <laughs> this book is nothing like I was expecting. I thought I knew exactly what this book was going to be going into it and it has this is a domestic thriller that I never saw coming. Um, there's a lot of just bad decisions, um, salacious acts that these women are doing. And now it's all coming back to bite them because now they have found a dead body. And um, I knew that from the synopsis that there was going to be a dead body um, found, but I didn't expect it to not come into play in the story until more than halfway through. So there was a lot of build up to this um, and it was starting to get a little bit too much for me, a little bit too uh, mom's gone wild. I was uh, talking on Marco Polo with Elizabeth and I told her, I said, this book is like 
Girls Gone Wild mixed with Sex and the City mixed with Duck Dynasty. I don't really know what's gonna happen. I don't really know how this is all gonna turn out. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Sophie gives up her secrets that she knows about the other women to help figure out who it was that killed this person. But I'm just shocked at some of the decisions that Sophie, our main character, is making. She goes from this, you know, nice, stable housewife to making all of these crazy, potentially life-altering decisions all for this one woman. And I still don't really understand where the obsession is coming from. Why is she so obsessed with this woman? Has she done this before? Is that why they moved? Like, I, I just don't, I want to know the backstory. I want to know more about what it is about this Margot character that Sophie is so obsessed with. But yeah, there's some things in here that I don't really agree with. There's some some weird little gaslighty conversations between she and her husband that make me feel kind of ick. And there's some consent issues that make me feel kind of ick. But I don't know, I'm interested to see how this turns out because I thought I knew exactly where this book was gonna go and now it's not turning out anything like I thought it was. So um, I'm going to read the last part of this and I will update you at the end of the book. I just finished this. What the heck even is this? I don't, I don't know what I'm going to rate this. I don't know. I don't even know my feelings about it. What even is this? I have never read something with such unlikable characters and with characters that just obviously ignored so many blatant signs. I, it's just, I'm baffled at the things that these women do. And it's almost like too much. It's like almost to an unrealistic point. And just how this mother is more worried about clearing the name of this woman she's obsessed with than she is worried about her relationship with her husband and her child. And I never got clear cut answers for why the obsession took place. And the ending was very dissatisfying. Like certain things in this made me feel angry, made me feel upset, made me feel disgusted. I mean, I ugh, these women were acting like obsessed teenagers. I don't know. I didn't feel like I got closure. I felt like Sophie, I figured out things like three or four pages before Sophie. So I'm sitting there waiting for Sophie to figure out. And I'm like, and then she figures it out. And she's like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, yeah, duh. We figured that out three pages ago. Where are you? Cause she just is, all the characters in this book were so unlikable. Like there was no redeeming qualities for anybody. I don't know. Like, I just have no idea what to think about this. I'm gonna have to uh, Marco Polo Elizabeth and hopefully she's almost done with it too so that I can get her thoughts on it because I'm not even really sure what I just read. I don't know how to rate this. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain my thoughts. Half the time I was reading this, my jaw was just like, like, no, that did not just happen. So I don't, I don't even know. I have to think about this. I don't even know. I have to think on this one. Okay, so it's time to film an outro for this reading vlog. And I wanted to wait a little bit and kind of sleep on it, think about my rating before I jumped on here and gave you my for sure rating. So you just saw my initial thoughts right after I finished the book, but I have never been this torn on how to rate a book before in my life. I was talking to Elizabeth and she and I had pretty similar thoughts, but basically I am not sure how to rate this book because I didn't like anything about the book but at the same time it created so many emotions in me that I almost feel like I have to rate it higher but the reality is if I rate something a four star it means that I would recommend it and it also means that I might potentially read it again at some point in the future I have no plans to ever read this book again and I don't think I would recommend it to people but at the same time I have constantly thought about the book and it it built up so much emotion in me. It made me feel so many different things 
that I don't think it even deserves a three star. So I've settled, I think, on 3.5 stars. Um, my Goodreads, since they don't have half stars, will probably say three, but I think I'm I think I'm good with a three and a half star. So things that I liked about the book. I liked the description. I liked how atmospheric it was. I liked that it made me want to keep reading. I wanted to know what was happening. Things I didn't like about the book. All of the characters. I did not like a single character in this book. They all acted juvenile. They all made just ridiculous outlandish decisions. And I can't think of a group of people that would genuinely act that way. I didn't like some of the relationship dynamics between people. It just it didn't always feel consensual. It felt a little bit gaslighty at times. I felt like the way they portrayed Sophie's husband was like he was always the bad guy. But I also think he still overreacted sometimes. So I don't know. The relationships were weird. I don't like that we never really understood the backstory of why the obsession took place with Margot, why her husband overreacted about all of these different things. And then I didn't like the ending because I felt like the ending was, a, I felt like the ending was too tied up in a pretty bow. I don't like that in thrillers. That is not real life. That is not reality. Real life is messy. And so I don't like when everything just feels so convenient. All in all, I was shocked at every turn with so many different things. My jaw was on the floor every couple of chapters. It kept me reading, it kept me interested, and I felt a lot of emotions. So all in all, I feel like this was a pretty successful reading vlog, even though I don't think I'm gonna continue to recommend this book. But I had so much fun reading this with Elizabeth and talking to her about it. And hopefully we'll do another reading vlog again in the future, do some other collab videos. Like I said, I will link her video and her channel below. If you're coming over here from Elizabeth's channel, hi, welcome. I hope you'll stay a while and subscribe. Definitely hop on over to Elizabeth's channel and watch her videos. Subscribe to her channel, tell her I sent you. And I will see you in my next video.